Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to FTD Speaks. All right, so Sheikh Uthman, it seems like every single week he's always at it with another Christian. Some type of drama, if you want to use that term, is always going down. So let's see his response to what's been going on in this latest run-in with Christian preachers. Alhamdulillah, thumma alhamdulillah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa accept it from us. The da'wah is growing. Alhamdulillah. Da'wah is growing. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every weekend we have people accepting Islam. You see the videos. Those people, alhamdulillah, many of them, they're coming to the masjid and they're learning their deen and becoming du'a. They're going out and giving da'wah. You see our brother Ben, you see Mark, you see Matthew, you see our brother Mujahid, you see Saul, you see all these brothers, brother Richard, mashallah. All these brothers, they accepted Islam with us at the park, came, learned the religion, Brother Willie and others, and now they're out there calling others to, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this has the, the deceptive haters, those deceptive haters. missionaries, frustrated, they're upset, they are, they are going crazy. How can we stop this da'wah from growing? So they've tried many things, physical attacks as you've seen, they've tried many other ways, they put up a tent next to us and they try to heckle us every time they see somebody accept Islam they kind of jump on them and pressure them and some oh, of those really? people they feel pressured and they, they give them all this misinformation Alhamdulillah we have those people's phone numbers we call them we follow up with them Alhamdulillah they're fine but these guys are trying everything one of the new little tricks they do is try to divert from the core creedal issues right so they brought this issue of Al-Masih and they say well why is Jesus the only one called Al-Masih, right? And what their intention is to try to over-exaggerate the status of Jesus. And I'm going to show their hypocrisy with two clear evidences today, inshallah, in this video. The first thing is, when they ask this question, is anybody else given the title of Al-Masih? I made a video, I showed them from their own book. From their own book, clearly Dawud and others like Saul and others were called Masih, Masih because it just means anointed. Bible. The same anointed one, the one that's chosen in their Bible. Evidence. Watch this. Now, this is a Christian missionary tactic. This guy sits and watches our videos for more than a year, just sits there, prepares to bring an off the wall random question to try to misconstrue ideas. Hmm. Because they cannot prove the divinity of Jesus from their own books, what they try to do is they say, Oh, look, Jesus, Isa, has been called Masih. That's a, that's a title he's been given, meaning the anointed or the chosen. So he says, oh, this means that he's different from all the other prophets. And to the ignorant Muslim, they will try to then make this seem as if Jesus is divine. Peace and blessings be upon him as a prophet. He's a prophet. But this is a random question that they try to use as a tactic. So we're going to give them evidences. We're not just about debates. I will take all the books to the park to show them. But I know from past experiences with Wood and others, when you take the books and evidences, they just run away. <laughs> and I know this missionary is going to do the same thing. So I'm going to scan and put those evidences in this video as well, so that any other missionary that tries to fool or trick a Muslim, they will have, the Muslims will have these evidences to show them. So what does Al-Masih mean? Here from Al-Ma'ani, from the famous Arabic dictionary, it shows Al-Masih, it is somebody who's anointed, anointed somebody right. who is blessed, somebody who is a, a king or a prophet. It can be used for prophets generally. Now, let's look at the evidences from their own books, from the Bible. I will give evidences from the Quran, from a hadith, but I'll also give evidence from their own book. If we look at Psalms, you will, this is again, this is pre-Jesus. This is Old Testament, mm -hmm. right? Here in Psalms, 1850, you will see the word Masih. I've highlighted it. Masih being used for Dawood, for David right. and his progeny that is to come, his descendants that will be prophets like Solomon and so on. So here, Masih, the same word that he's like, oh, never been used except for Jesus is being shown in his own book. Hmm. And you will see it used for Cyrus. In fact, you will use it used all over the Old Testament being used for other than Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. Now this Psalms 105.15, this is very clear. It shows the plural sense being used for prophets 
and it says, do not touch my anointed one. This is the Musahi. This is the one who is Masih. And then he and explains that do, the, do my prophets no harm. Showing that this word Masih is used for prophets. Now, if he wants evidence from the Quran, we'll give evidence from the Quran. This is from Tafsir al tabarin This is an evidence-based Tafsir, not an opinion-based based athar. Right? Here, when the word Masih is used, Ibn al waqiyah his hadith, with the chain, he explained this word from his father, Yani al waqiyah ibn Jarrah, from Sufyan, from Mansur, from Ibrahim al Nakhai, who explains the word Masih to mean a Siddiq, those that are truthful, and those that are anointed with Barakah, meaning those that were prophets. In fact, in the evidence based, now again, this is evidence based tafsir, Mathur. It shows that Ibrahim al Nikhai and uh, Hassan al Basri explain this word to mean those that were blessed, those that were chosen. Now, the ulama of Islam, based on these evidences, have said that Masih is a word that is, that is used as a title, as it was for Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. But it can be used, Yaqsud bihi kullun nabi. It can be referenced to any prophet. Right. And what is the ma'ana? What is the meaning? Al Mukhtar min Allah, the one who is chosen by Allah. This is the evidence based response. Now, if they were sincere, they would have said yes. In our own book, we have others called Masih. So, done. No, but this is insincerity. They were like, no, in the Quran and Hadith. Okay. As you saw in the clip, from a hadith, these are a hadith. When you have chains, this is Ibn Abi Hatim, for example. And I have the book here, Ibn Abi Hatim. Mm -hmm. When he makes tafsir, he does it with hadith. And he shows from Abu Sa'id, from Waqi' from Sufyan, from Mansur, from Ibrahim. What is Al-Masih? Here it meaning Siddiq. A Siddiq, the truthful ones. In others, we showed that this is a meaning that can be given to every Nabi. This is the ones who are chosen, anointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be those who bring a message. And I'll give you clear evidence. If they want to know clear from hadith, we'll give them a clear evidence right here. This is the Jami' Tirmidhi. This is the famous book of Tirmidhi. Who's called Al-Masih? In the hadith here, hadith 2243. Huh? Who is it called? Al-Dajjal. Dajjal is Dajjal Messiah is Al too. Al-Masih with the Al. Right here. Right? So it's not something that, that only Isa ibn Maryam. Why Dajjal? And this is Al-Mubarak Puri in Tuhfat al ahwad He explained, he goes, why? Because Jesus was the prophet sent with guidance. Dajjal is a false prophet. False prophet, right? okay. This is so why Rasulullah You could call him Messiah too? And there will be those who will be huh. called Dajjal. There will be false prophets. Right? Another hadith, other numbers given as well. These are the false prophets. So this tells you that Dajjal is also called Al-Masih, but the Masih, the false prophet towards misguidance. And Al-Masih using here for Isa ibn Maryam, this is the one who brings towards guidance. Okay. We showed you evidences for this, but let me point Learn something out every day. Did not know Dajjal could one, be called Messiah. even too. in their own book, they didn't care. They didn't even respond to it. They didn't even, they just walk right <laughs> by it. Secondly, when I showed these evidences to him, they didn't respond to any of those, right? I well, it's clear, Messiah can be we see many big books of hadith here. More than just Jesus. Islam, thousands of ahadith, hundreds of volumes in my own library. So we don't just go through a hadith book and just read through every single page trying to find one word. Academics, we don't Google like these guys. Go find some Shia website and Google like they did. No. I use Maktaba Shamila, and I'm going to put a screenshot here. In Maktaba Shamila, which is an academic software used to research Islamic books, I have 16,000 books in Maktaba Shamila. Hmm. I don't have all those in my library. No library probably has all of those. But these are 16,000, not one volume. Some of those books are 30, 40 volumes wow. each. 16,000 of those in my Maktab Shamila. So I put in this word, Al-Masih, and I found so many view hits about Jesus, about Dajjal, about the word, the explanation of the word, by Sahaba, Tabi'in. I showed some of those. I also did the Jama'ah, the plural of it. And as you can see, it came up under Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba as Masah, which is the Jama'ah for Masih, the plural for Masih. I printed it directly and I took it to them, right? Now, because they couldn't respond to their own Bible, they couldn't respond to their credo mistakes, they couldn't respond to the fact that we showed them that day in front of their face that they lied about Jesus knowing, right? What did they say? They said, this same man came to debate with us before and he brought an explanation, a, 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 a commentary of the Bible with him, right? which is the MacArthur Study Bible. Oh yeah, I remember this. And when I caught him on 
contradictions in the Bible, he used that to say, oh, look at his explanation, the context that he gives, right? But then when we caught him, when Jesus says, look at this verse, when Jesus says that nobody knows about the hour, not even the angels, nor the Son, Jesus makes it, not the Son, doesn't know, only the Father. Now they're caught, now they're caught. Because if they admit that Jesus doesn't know, then he can't be God. And if he is God, then he would know. He's not, is, is he a liar? No, he's caught. So he makes up this thing, oh no, no, Jesus did know, he just didn't declare it. Now his own recommended study Bible, the one that he brought with him when he debated with us, when I showed it to him, that that contradicted him, it showed that Jesus didn't know. Now he's caught. Because you know that the book you recommended. Now this book, and I think you said I saw it was this recently, too, right? actually, yeah. Right, Khan? Mm -hmm. You said it was a good book too, right? I said John MacArthur is a good author. A uh, good author, right? Yeah. This author... Well, he says it different. He, he contradicts right. what the Christian <laughs> preacher is saying, right. the author yeah. of the, sure. the, the right. MacArthur right. Study Bible. This, this, this book, the MacArthur Study Bible, is one that Avery recommended to me. Upon his recommendation, I went out and bought this book, right? Now, under the verse, where he's on video, so he's not going to jump from this now, right? Where he said, that Jesus did know, he just didn't declare it. He had the knowledge. It's not, he wasn't speaking out of not knowing. He had the knowledge, but like the Jewish wedding, where it's the Father's right to declare. So Jesus knew it, he just didn't declare, which to me didn't make sense at the time, because if he knew and said, I don't know, that would be a lie, and I don't believe prophets lie. But that's just my understanding. But his point was, Jesus did know. In the McCarthy Study hmm. Bible, that you recommended and you recommended. What does it mention? Like now you're now you're jumping in the middle, right? Yeah, it's all right, bro. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Come on, guys. Nor the sun. Funny sometimes. When it says in the verse in Mark, thirteen thirty-two, as you well know, that but of the day and hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. McCarthy Study Bible says, when Jesus spoke these words to his disciples, you guys paying attention? When Jesus spoke these words to his disciples, even he had no knowledge of the date and time of his return. Mic drop. I'm going to read that one more time. All right? When Jesus spoke these words, what happened to the smile? Then these words, when Jesus spoke these words to his disciples, even he had no knowledge of the date and time of his return. So when he can't catch on these creedal issues, he wants to go with side issues. Look, I printed that out from Maktaba Shamil. I brought it with me that showed it as a part of the hadith. If they say that though no, this is a print error, then no problem. We can contact Darul Kutub Al Miya and say you have a print error. If they said this is not a part of the hadith, no problem. We can look at mm -hmm. the actual printed book, and if it's not, halas, my bad. But this is not a lie, it's not a deception. I printed it directly, as you can see, from Maktaba Shamil and took it to them. All those evidences we gave them, they ignored. But I'll show their final clear hypocrisy. Clear hypocrisy. When he was in front of us and he thought that was a hadith, did he admit to it? Did he go, okay, yeah, you're right, it's hadith? No! He kept saying, no, no, where is it? In the Quran? The Quran. Mm. Meaning it didn't even matter to him if it's in the hadith or not. They don't want to know the truth. They just want to deceive. They just want to go around it. If that's not in the hadith, if that's a print error, that is on Darul Qutub al miya not on me. But I will take the responsibility to say, we'll put that evidence aside. But all the other evidences we gave from hadith that explain the word, from hadith they call the Jal Masiya, from the Quran that shows that Isa ibn Maryam was not the son of Allah. Look, if you want to know who is Al-Masih in the Quran, then listen to the Quran itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بعد عود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كفر الذين قالوا إن الله هو مسيح Allah says, verily those who say the Masih, Ibn Maryam, Jesus, the son of Maryam, Al-Masih, those who say he is Allah, they made kufr, they are disbelievers. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the same verse in the Quran, وقال المسيح, you want to listen to what Jesus says? He says, وقال المسيح, and Masih said, يا بني إسرائيل, O children of Israel, اعبدوا الله, Worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbakum, my Rabb and your Lord, my Lord and your Lord. What does Masih say in the Quran? If you want to see the Quran explain Masih, here it is. Masih says that, that worship Allah and Allah is the Rabb, the Lord of Al-Masih. 
Allah is the Lord of Jesus and your Lord and my Lord and everybody's Lord is Allah. This is from the Quran. If you want to know about Masih in the Quran, here is your evidence. Look, don't try to distract from the subject. Don't try to hide from your creedal issues. Don't try to come and heckle. If you have a da'wah, go put a table, go give your da'wah. Because nobody's becoming Christian, you're upset. Right? When we are giving da'wah, don't try to come and take people away and hide and talk to them and these kinds of things because you know all you're trying to do is deceive people. Sheikh Uthman is savage sometimes, man. The da'wah. I'm going to give you this glad tiding, this news to end on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is continuing. Even that day, we had people accept Islam. The next day, we had people, I wasn't even there, I was in Atikaf, people were still accepting Islam. Every day since that, on Zoom, on phone calls, people have been calling us, accepting Islam, watching the videos. Islam will grow. It will reach every household, even if you hate it. All right, guys, I think it's pretty clear cut that the term Messiah can be used in multiple instances. And we saw evidence of that. And I, I didn't think that this was um, knowledge that, you know, Christian preachers wouldn't know. or that I thought it was actually common knowledge in Christianity that, that the term could be used. But it was also just like any other term. It was a title that people uh, chose to label Jesus with like he's the Messiah but you know all the prophets are messiahs and it's just like how people would say Abraham oh he's the friend of God but all, all the prophets you would say would be friends of God or, or messenger of God you know in, in um, Muslim circles they say um, Rasulullah messenger of Allah for Prophet Muhammad but all of the prophets had a message from God and shared it. So all of them are messengers of God, but it's just those phrases, they are given more prominence for certain prophets like Messiah for or Jesus. That's what I understand from this anyways. But uh, I, I don't know if you have any other ways to see it. Anybody watching this that has any other way to see it, but that's kind of how I see it. That's how it you know makes sense to me. And uh, yeah, Sheikh Uthman, uh, he, he, he brought some good, solid, strong arguments. And I, I just kind of heard the frustration in his voice. Like, I understand why he felt it was necessary to make this video, just to clarify and sort of just uh, shed some light on certain tactics that people are using to kind of uh, expose him or expose his message or whatnot. And so I, I see why he felt the need to make this video. And honestly, it, I, I know it's not just me, but you you heard the frustration in his voice and how he ended it saying that he, you're not going to stop this, right? Uh, it's going to keep on going. Islam is going to keep on growing. I think what happens is a lot of people, you know, Muslims and Christians, they, they get into these uh, debates and they are set out to try to prove somebody wrong and to stop them from doing their work. But if your work, if your religion is the right one, then focus on that. Don't try to disrupt what other people are doing. Just, you know, do what you got to do. That's it. Go focus on sharing the, 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 the message of Christianity or whatever. Do that rather than trying to interfere with a Muslim doing that. And, and it goes vice versa as well, too. I think we honestly need to see more of that. Just people being free to just share their religion to whoever wants to listen. No force, nobody getting in anybody's way, as long as it doesn't violate the basic human rights that we all agree upon as humans. You know, the right to life, the, the right to have uh, food and shelter and all of that. As long as it doesn't infringe on that, let people practice their religion and share the religion with whoever they choose and whoever wants to hear. You know, who are you to try to stop that? Just share yours, share your religion. Don't try to stop someone else from doing theirs. Because if you want to be free to share your religion, I'll, you got to allow people to share theirs. That's really it, guys. So that's just my two cents on this. Thanks for hanging out with me on another video. Let me know what your thoughts are about this, what Shake With Mon said about any of my comments as well. Sound off down below, join in on the conversation, and I'll catch you beautiful people in the next one. Later.